ETL at did everybody find his file? Put your hand if you already found this file and can open that. Downloaded kind of the source tag of AVL because last time we only ran AVL without the, the source tag. You could download the, the compress, I think, tr.mz uh, or something. Mm -hmm. So even if you're already able to run AVL, download that in addition because that contains like a ROMs folder that has a lot of examples. Just go to the AVL website or just go search for AVL MIT and just find it. Do we change the first one? The first one. Yeah. Yeah, the PGZ. Yeah. And when you open AVL, uh, when you launch AVL, make sure you are launching that in the ROMs folder so that you can load the AVL. So here, uh, this is too dark. Let me see if I can. So if you uh, if you launch AVL in the correct or wrong folder, if you type load plan, uh, one second. Looks like I didn't open in the right folder. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, if you load the plan.avl, yeah, you should uh, get things loaded. It's called uh, plan vanilla. It has a wing, has a stab, and it has a thing. Three aerodynamic surfaces. Yeah. So open it. Do uh, you have the wrong folder? Yes. Yeah. Go to the wrong folder. Open plan. Dot ABL. Okay. You can open the terminal in the folder and uh, uh, type the whole tag of the application. That one works. Or you can just move the application into the. Yeah, File both in the text editor and in AVL. Raise your hand. No. I, 
Are you able to do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of Yeah. Oh, some of those things that we have to do. I don't know. I don't remember how we did on the back. How about you draw and drag the deal out to test it? Yes. Where did you do that? Now we'll start with that. Have a wrong folder? Uh, go to the internet, uh, download, uh, go to the ABL web page, search for ABL MIT, and just download the .ptz file. That's the first file there. If it decompresses, uh, there should be a wrong folder that contains a lot of .abl files. So second step, like you need to run the ABL application when you are inside that wrong folder. So different. Uh, uh, operating systems uh, might uh, you might do it differently. You either move the ABL application into that wrong folder, run it over there, or open a terminal inside the wrong folder and invoke ABL inside the terminal. Either way, it works. Yes. I think that's it. I think, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm oh, I see. So, so it uh, looks like in that, uh, uh, moving the application into that folder didn't uh, help. Uh, okay. Let's see, can I uh, open that? Uh, so, how, you know how to open this okay. folder? <laughs> yeah, I just like I see the typing. Okay, so can you go to that folder? Where is that? There we go. Yeah. Okay, open it again. Okay, so, so I, I think if uh, moving the application in the folder doesn't work, then open the terminal and uh, uh, see into that uh, folder and then run ABL. Yes? So I have. It was in the last time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, on the right side, just open it with any text editor. Oh. Yeah, but not ABL file, it's just a text file. Open it to any, anything you want. Anything that's able to edit text. Anybody else uh, uh, can help? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so, so I, I also saw elsewhere that uh, doing this doesn't work, so uh, uh, I'm just going open the terminal. Where is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then can you see me to that one folder? Yeah. So do you know where that one folder is? Or is it in space? Okay. 
So let's look at what we have. So this time we have an entire airplane, not just a wing, right? So if you look at, at the, all the surfaces we have, we have three surfaces, a wing, a horizontal stabilizer, and a fin. Like, uh, uh, so let's look at the, the first two. So uh, because uh, the first two are important for longitudinal stability, right? Okay. So. Um, uh, again, maybe just to very quickly go through all the stuff. Mach number zero means it's incompressible flow, uh, very low Mach number. And the uh, SREF is the reference area. So whenever we look at the lift coefficient, the drag coefficient, we divide by the half rho v square and further divide by SREF. And CREF is used for moment around the y axis, the pitching moment. And the B ref, uh, the span, is used for non dimensionalizing rolling and the yawing moment. So, these moments, when you see like uh, the moment coefficients, uh, they are divided by half rho u squared, then divided by S ref, and then divided by either B ref or C ref. Okay. And uh, this, yes? Can you add comments like, with the hashtag to the text editor? Just to target the point. Uh, 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 I can put. Uh, well, just for me, you can add, like, comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can add comments like this uh, excla exclamation mark. Oh, so right. every line starting with exclamation mark is going to be ignored. Oh. Okay. And uh, I don't remember if you can add uh, comments behind, like, like at the end of a line. But like at least uh, I think you can. Uh, you can you can do things. Uh, yeah, you, you, I think these lines are also going to be ignored, and uh, uh, yeah, so so you can you can do it that way. Yes. You see how you open this like there is like this section on the right. Are you doing it? How did I do that? How do you see that? Yeah. Oh, so you can open it with any text editor. I I opened it with a VI. Okay, perfect. So so that's uh something like you can if you have the a Linux uh, subsystem for Windows, you can do that. Or on, on Mac, you can. I don't know if Mac comes with VI. Uh, and I split the screen using TMAX. If, uh, well, if you're kind of a geek like me, you, you know what that is. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. OK. Uh, so OK, so, so we have a wing. I mean, any, anything after surface means it, it uh, is one like entirely different aerodynamic surface. And uh, here, uh, the first line is the name of the surface. It's called a wing. And uh, uh, so, OK, so when you see n clockwise is equal to 1, this is actually using lifting line theory, right? So basically, there is only one vortex uh, in the clockwise direction, right? Uh, on the, I mean, by default, it's on the quarter chord. 
and uh, uh, there are 16 span wise vortices uh, discretizing like the uh, the vortex system associated with that wing. Why duplicate zero means the aerodynamic surface is duplicated at y equal to zero means it's basically it's a symmetric right and angle four means it is a uh, pitched four degrees above the angle of attack of the entire airplane so if the airplane is at one degree angle of attack this wing is going to be at five okay and uh, the wing is linearly interpolated between two cross sections the first cross section has z equal to zero which means uh, sorry y equal to zero which means exactly at the uh, symmetry plane the second cross section is equal to y equal to 7.5 which is uh, exactly half of uh span right so that's the wingtip and uh, we can see it has a uh, the x increased a little bit so it has a slight uh, sweep in the positive direction because x increased right it also has a small dihedral it also has a small taper because the cord uh, at the root is larger than the cord at the tip right okay so any questions on these numbers and finally uh, the entire wing has an aileron so any anything after the control means control surface is attached uh, uh, to that surface so so and if it goes all the way from a root uh, to a tip it's like uh, yeah it's the simplest the case possible um, and uh, let's let's ignore these uh, uh, numbers for now and uh, we'll get back to that later so another surface uh, we want to look at is the horizontal stabilizer again it's a one cutwise vortex which means basically lifting line theory and uh, seven vortices uh, in the spanwise direction also duplicated around y equal to zero it's also translated uh, uh, by six in the x direction which means uh, the leading edge of the uh, a horizontal tail is six units behind uh, that of the main wing right and uh, uh, well, the angle I think I, I it was it should be zero originally and uh, so basically means the angle of attack of the stabilizer uh, horizontal tail is the same as the airplane okay and again it has two cross sections and uh, uh, with a span of equal to four right because half span is equal to two and uh, there is no uh, there is no dihedral and uh, a little bit of a backward sweep on the leading edge and uh, uh, a little bit of taper right okay and uh, uh, there is an elevator attached uh, to this uh, uh, to the to the horizontal stabilizer and uh, if you look at the difference between the elevator and uh, the aileron the only difference is the last number so the last number controls whether the control surface is symmetric or anti-symmetric when you invoke y duplicate so here y duplicate is zero which means this is duplicated around the y equals zero right so if the last number on the control surface is one then the uh, the control surface is deflected in the same direction for the duplicate. If it's minus one, it means the control surface is deflected in the opposite direction for the duplicated other half. Right? For aileron, if the right aileron goes up, the left goes down. But for of course for the elevator, they both go up and go down at the same time. Yes? So what are all the zeros in the middle for? Um, these are the hinge locations and the hinge. Uh, uh, these are the hinge location and the hinge axis. And uh, uh, I, I don't remember exactly which numbers are for which, but like uh, uh, these. Yeah, I, I, we need to go to the AVL documents to look at the which number is which. But these these controls like where it deflects around, and the for. If we're using lifting line theory, then this doesn't really matter because it doesn't have enough court-wise vortices to discretize like exactly how it rotates. Okay, so I, I think uh, if you put it as like one zero zero zero, it means like the whole surface is actually deflecting. I mean, of course, for aileron it doesn't make sense, but like for 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 horizontal stabilizer, it means like an all-moving horizontal tail. 
Okay, so this is basically, let's ignore the thing because we are not going to be looking at, uh, uh, we are only going to be looking at uh, uh, pitch stability today. So, okay, so when you load it, uh, let me just load it again because uh, I changed it. Uh, okay, and once you load it, go to operations. And in operations, the first thing you can do is you can do G. That gives me the geometric plot, and that's uh, what the airplane looks like, right? You get a, a pretty high aspect ratio main wing and uh, a uh, horizontal stabilizer and a fin. Okay, this is the simplest possible plane um, configuration you can get. Uh, are you able to see that? Okay, anybody cannot see that? No. Yeah, there is this thing called X X eleven. I don't know like uh, how Mac is supporting it. Uh, uh, I haven't used Mac for like a long time. Does, does anybody know how like like X eleven doesn't work on Mac? Does anybody know how? So that yeah, there's something called X X Okay, okay, X Yeah, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, no. Okay. Good. Yeah, and uh, as you can see. Uh, yeah, if you go go to keystroke mode, you can go like like left and right and uh, look at this thing differently and type enter to exit. Okay, so that's uh, basically a very old fashioned way to uh, oh a space to exit, like a very old fashioned way to uh, uh, of of GUI. All right, so when we start to run things, type X. So X actually uh, ex executes, sorry, executes uh, the the lifting line theory in this case, or vortex lattice method uh, uh, in general, and it computes things. So by default, it is computing the scenario where the angle of attack is equal to zero and there is zero deflection in all the control surfaces. Yes. How do you close the geometry? Type. Uh, if you type space on the geometry, then it access exits like keystroke mode. Then just to switch your window back to your, you don't have to close it. Just to switch your window back to the AVL window. Okay, and you type X, uh, you should be able to see what's going on. So by default, it runs when alpha equal to zero, beta equal to zero, mark equal to zero, and uh, uh, all the control surface deflections are also equal to zero, right? All the aileron elevator rudder. Oh, there is also a rudder on the on the thing, so all of them are equal to zero. Okay, and uh, the important thing it computes is a uh, uh, lift coefficient and the drag coefficient. So. Lift coefficient is a point four ish, and the drag coefficient is point oh oh three ish. All right, and uh, uh, by the way, so here we are not AVO has no idea about the uh, viscous drag. So the only drag here it computes is uh, uh, induced drag, right? So the actual airplane, if you actually build it, it would not not have such a small uh, total drag. All right. Uh, now the stuff I want to show you is the following. Uh, first of all, last lecture we already said okay we can control angle of attack right by specifying c, which is the lift coefficient. For example, if I specify lift coefficient equal to 0.5, and run it again, uh, I would get a alpha that's no longer zero. I get the angle of attack equal to about one degree, right? So basically, it automatically calculates alpha to so that the airplane is at 0.5 uh, CL lift coefficient. So if you know the weight of the airplane and you know how fast it is flying, this is uh, the way you set the. This is the way you figure out what angle of attack your airplane is going to be flying. Okay. Now, 
what we want to do in addition is to set the elevator. Okay, so D2 sets the elevator. Right now, it has a pointer saying that, okay, we are setting the ele elevator angle by the elevator angle, which is basically fixing the elevator angle to zero degrees. But we can set it to something different. We can set it to pitching moment. So PN would be set into pitching moment. And for example, if you know the center of gravity of your airplane is at zero, 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 right? Then the pitching moment has to be what? For it to be flying without pitching up or down. Zero, right? Okay, zero. And uh, you do execute again. So now you see the elevator deflection angle is minus 0 0.05, right? So it is no longer uh, zero. And uh, uh, the previous lift coefficient is still going to be set. So the so the lift coefficient is still 0 0.5. And uh, now you see that uh, CM. Where is CM? Mm, yeah, CM is now zero. So now if you compare with the previous CM, in the previous calculation, my CM is uh, definitely not, yeah, my CM is gonna be negative. So here, let me uh, say a little bit about the sign of uh, CM, All right? So uh, let me go, actually, let me show the airplane on the screen. So. You see the three axes, right? X axis, this is minus 0.1, this is plus 7, right? So the X axis points that way. The Y axis, this is minus 0.5, plus 0.5. Y axis points that way. So CM is the moment around the, uh, around the, the Y axis. So, uh, so, So CM is along the y axis. This CM uh, negative would mean like a moment that, uh, right? So, so positive CM is going to be a CM that nose up, right? Negative CM would be a CM that's uh, tail up. Okay. But, uh, Okay. So now I set the CM to zero, right? And uh, uh, my induced drag should actually change a little bit. My induced drag, uh, uh, if, if you compare this case with the previous case, usually when you trim the airplane so that uh, the nose goes up more, you would get more induced drag. And the reason for that is uh, uh, explained uh, by lifting line theory, as you can see, if you complete your homework. Okay, um, what do we do next? Uh, next, I think what, what I want to uh, show you that's most important is ST, stability derivatives. Actually, let, let me, let me before I go to stability derivatives, let me show you like the surface forces. If you type Fn, that gives you all the surface forces. Surface forces means the the force uh, for the different uh, for every different surface. In this case, I have five surfaces because uh, every symmetric surface is duplicated on both sides. So uh, in this case, this is basically breakdown of the entire CL, which is 0.5, right? It tells me the left and right wing both contributes 0.5. 05 to the total CL of 0.5. Okay, while the contribution of the uh, horizontal tail is negligible, and of course the fin doesn't contribute anything; it's vertical. Also, it tells me like how do the different surfaces contribute to the drag coefficient. Okay, and also to the moment coefficient. Here, what's it, what's interesting is that okay, so, uh, so the main wing contributes a negative moment coefficient, which means the main wing tries to make the airplane go nose down, right? But the, the horizontal stabilizer contributes to a positive moment, which means that it tries to make the airplane go nose up. 
right? So because our horizontal tail is is backward and provides downforce, if you look at the CL, right, it's it's downward. So that's uh, how it uh, gives me a nose up moment. And uh, uh, the other stuff, uh, CY, is the force in the y direction, in the standwise direction. Uh, I mean, there is non-zero CY just because we have a hydro on the wing, right? And the CY would be uh, what uh, would sum up to be non-zero, right? For example, if the airplane starts to have a side stick. And uh, we also have the other uh, yaw moment and uh, rolling moment uh, on CM and uh, uh, CL. All right. Uh, so, so, and uh, uh, these are what you want to have if you want to look at the things uh, in more detail, like individual surfaces. And uh, uh, this is basically what is the surface of the what is the surface of the individual uh, surfaces. And this is like what is the average the court length. And this is like the CLCD. It's I only look at the instead of using S wrap, I use the area of that surface. Right? These are yeah, similar values, just the non-dimensionalized with respect to the, the own surface uh, geometry. Okay. Questions? No? Okay. Now let's look at the stability. That's uh, the important stuff if you want to make your airplane fly stably. And here, let's just look at the uh, uh, derivative with respect to alpha. So, CL alpha is the derivative of this coefficient with respect to angle of attack, right? What does thin airflow theory tell us? Did, 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 you, did you do thin airflow theory in, in Unified? Do you know, like, what is the derivative of CL to alpha predicted by thin airflow theory? 2 pi. 2 pi. Okay, so I'm going yeah. to do it uh, uh, yeah, when we talk about airfoils. This is uh, pretty close to 2 pi, right? And because of the induced uh, flow, etc., it's usually slightly lower than 2 pi, but like, uh, not that much lower. And uh, for stability, the most important thing is the derivative of Cm with respect to alpha. That's exactly what we did on Wednesday. It's when you pitch up the airplane, which means alpha increases, how would the CM change? And uh, here it predicts a negative change, right? So a negative change means, uh, okay, positive is nose up, negative is nose down. So if alpha increases, I get a nose down moment. That's good. All right. Okay, now let's actually think about exactly the same airplane, but imagine my center of gravity is not at zero, but at, uh, let's say, mm, what is the root code? The root code is one, right? Let's say at the right at the center of the main wing, right? For those who uh, build and uh, flow model airplanes, uh, you would start to get nervous, right? If my center of gravity is right at the center of of the main wing, uh, usually it's not very easy to fly, right? Okay, so then the important thing is now, okay, so, so let's say we still are flying, the weight didn't change, so the CL is going to be exactly the same, but if I change the center of gravity, what would I need to change for the airplane to be still flying in a steady flight? my angle of the elevator right i have to i mean the 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 uh the technical word is I, I have to trim the airplane differently right so i would i would say d2 and my pm is still i'm still going to be setting a pitching moment but now if my airplane center of gravity is at uh is at uh, uh point 0.5 downstream and here uh, remember like my my reference code is equal to one right my uh, my c ref is equal to one if i if i remember correctly uh where's my no 
yeah, my C ref is equal to one. So, uh, what should my pitching moment be for the airplane to be flying stably? Lift coefficient is 0.5. Right. 0.25 exactly. Right. So this is a. I want the lift vector to be half of the reference cord. Right. Downstream of the uh, of the origin. Okay. And I want the pitch and moment to be. Nose up or nose down? Nose down, right? So, uh, nose down pitching moment. I mean, again, like uh, use the right hand side rule. Nose down pitching moment is this way, right? So, your thumb is going to be pointed towards the negative y direction. Okay, so your pitching moment we want to set should be minus 0.25. Okay. Anybody has questions around this minus 0.25 number? If you have to, yeah? So the 0.5, this is the parameter that has 0.5. Yeah, it's the lift coefficient you need, right? That's the force times the leg. And both are non dimensional. So the lift, the lift is non dimensionalized so that you are using the lift coefficient. And the, the lag you non dimensionalize by the reference cord length, right? Mm -hmm. So we are multi multiplying half, which is the lift coefficient, by half, which means the uh, the center of gravity is half of the reference cord, like mm -hmm. uh, from origin. Okay, get it? Okay, and uh, the sign we use the right hand rule to figure that out. Okay, now we run again, execute. And now, if we look at the surface forces again, what do we get? Uh, now, if you look at the lift, the horizontal tail is no longer providing me negative lift, right? It's providing me positive lift, okay? And uh, if you look at the uh, the lift coefficient not non-dimensionalized with respect to this reference area, but with the area of the horizontal tail itself, you're gonna see in the lift coefficient actually is not that small, right? It's on the same order of magnitude as the main wing. So, so the horizontal tail is working as hard as the main wing, almost as hard to lift the airplane up. And uh, of course, the effect on the uh, on the moments is that uh, it, uh, the horizontal tail is providing most of the nose down moment to balance the afterward center of gravity. Now, if you look at the stability derivatives, and uh, the important thing is how to interpret that. So, see how alpha doesn't change. What's interesting is CM alpha also didn't change that much. It's still negative, but does that mean the airplane is stable? Remember, like this CM alpha is the derivative of the CM around the reference center, right? Around zero, zero, zero. Okay. With respect to alpha. But what we care about now is the derivative of the moment around the center of gravity. Okay, how do we translate a moment around the zero to a moment around a different point? So let me say if my lift is around the, if my lift is around zero, okay, so this is my origin. Okay, my this is my lift, uh, CL is equal to 0.5. Right? And let's just imagine my CM is equal to zero, so moment around uh, y-axis is equal to zero. So this is x-axis, this is uh, 
y axis and the z axis. I want to calculate the moment around the center of gravity here. What is the moment? Is the moment still zero? If I shift where, I want to calculate the moment about. Not zero anymore, right? Is it nose up moment or nose down moment? Nose up moment, right? And how much is it? It's 0.25 times than that, right? Okay, so basically the moment CM, let me say CM origin. So the CMCG is going to be equal to CM origin. I mean, if I have a, if I do have a moment around here, it's going to translate into here, and then plus. Actually, in this way, it's uh, uh, it's it's going to be minus, right? Because we are providing a uh, actually it's plus because we are this is providing a nose up moment, which is a plus in this direction, plus CL times x c g divided by c ref. Uh, sorry. Right, the location of the c g divided by non-dimensionalized by the reference code. Okay. And in this case, uh, this is going to be point, uh, point Oh, so okay. So this is just the this is just the, the the relationship. Of course, then the derivative, the d c m c g d alpha, is going to be d uh, c m zero d alpha, which is this negative number, negative uh, three, right? Okay, plus d c l d alpha times point five. All right, but in this case, TCL D alpha is this number that's more than six. Okay, so even divided by five, uh, divided by half, uh, divided by two is going to be more than three, right? And uh, this guy is only minus two point something, so the whole thing is going to be positive, which means that airplane is going to be what unstable. All right. Okay, any questions on this? It might be just uh, easier uh, to do this. If my x ref is 0.5, I'm going to just uh, do it again. Actually, you do it. <laughs> okay, uh, edit the AVL file so that the x ref is 0.5. This way, all the moments are going to be non-dimensionalized to uh, the new center of gravity. And the redo everything and the calculate. Make sure the, uh, uh, the, the surface force you get is going to... Okay, so, so redo everything means set the, angle, set the angle of attack so that CL is equal to 0.5. And set the horizontal stabilizer so that uh, uh, the moment coefficient cm is going to be zero now around this new reference center Okay, and make sure the surface forces you get is going to be the same as what I got when I have a different Reference center, but setting a target cm to be point minus point two five Right the surface forces should be the same But then when you run stability derivatives, you should get a slightly unstable uh, pitch stability all right, try it. Yes. to dump it in a file or just to press enter so to display on the screen just to type enter right if you type a file name it'll save it in the file 
Yeah, it's along the wind pointing from port side to the starboard side, right? So yeah. if you use your right hand